Christmas is coming up, and maybe that means you're looking for a new movie to watch, bring the whole family to. Right now, Journey to Bethlehem is in theaters. It's a great one to watch with the whole family. We got to do a screening of it a couple weeks ago, and it was a ton of fun. And I'm so pleased to be joined with Joel and Mariah Smallbone, who got to be a part of this movie, work on it. And, you know, there's so many Christmas movies. So what would you say makes this one different? One of the first films that I've ever seen that has taken a an historical moment that everyone is so familiar with and we've seen plays and we've seen church productions <laughs> and we even have a certain picture I think that comes to mind when we read the nativity story but I think this is the first film to take a beautiful story and breathe life into the margins of it, to oxygenate it, to add to the imagination of what were these characters thinking and what would it look like if we just had them singing and dancing all the time? It's almost slightly ridiculous, but it I think it opens up your imagination to go, these were real people who had real feelings, real families, real thoughts. Yeah. Um, and that just makes it a bit more accessible. For sure. And you know, talking about that music is obviously a big part of both of your lives. That's what you guys do and you're passionate about. So is that like also a big, um, like a big thing when you were thinking about doing this movie and you're like, okay, like I want to be a part of this and I want to help bring this to life in a different way. Yeah. Well, it was a cool journey, Angela, with, with a lot of twists and turns because they approached Mariah last, was that like last December. December and started talking to her about uh, the role of Deborah, um, Mary's sister, um, which is really she's kind of a guide to Mary uh, in these crucial decisions of being married and and whatnot. And um, but it meant her going to Spain for like the better part of two months, which she's right in the middle of a, a country Latin project. And and I was initially like, I don't know if this is a good idea. Like you see, she's just in deep recording and writing this project and. And uh, she came, I remember it very vividly. And she was like, hey, that's something I really feel like is important and I'm called to do. And I, I see myself in the story. And uh, so off she went. And then midway through, I was actually going over to visit just for four days. And they had just, they were in the middle of the production. So she'd been there for a month. They just cast Antonio Banderas to play um, Herod. And they were waiting to cast his son because they wanted to try and find a, I guess, a likeness. Uh, apparently I look like Antonio somehow but um, Mariah called me two days before I was flying out to visit she said hey they talked to me over the weekend what do you think about playing Antonio's son so it went from you know you know in the matter of 48 hours basically going over to visit for four days to staying for four weeks and uh, so we got to we got to take him a little bit of Spain together ironically we're never in a scene together it's like the whole film is this handoff. It's like Mariah and Mary and family are in this scene and then it's Herod and Antipater in the next scene and it sort of toggles back. But there are a few people on set that endearingly started calling us Tippy and Debbie, mm -hmm. nicknames for Antipater and Deborah. And, you know, maybe one day we'll do a spinoff yeah. where Tippy and Debbie. Yeah. You've, he you've heard it here first. It's going to be a, <laughs> it's going to be a sequel. The forbidden love of Herod's son and Mary's sister. Stay tuned for theaters 2025, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. And what was that? What was that like? Because I mean, obviously you guys are both in the music world and making music, but getting to work on something together, being there as like a spouse, but then also as like colleagues and stuff. What was that like? Well, we, we've really built our relationship on creative collaboration we first met in the studio writing a song together that's and how i convinced her to get to know me it's like hey, it's just, i'm a writer you're a writer let's, let's play, write a song it. <laughs> <laughs> it worked his plan worked um and i would say from that day to this we have made it our focus to really push one another in the gifts and talents that each person has. And so even though initially Joel wasn't super thrilled about me leaving for another country for two months, he, I think very selflessly supported me in making that decision and it did pay off. Um, but I think being on set, it was just a very tangible way of 
experiencing the partnership that we have here at home day to day. And that is we are one another's test and approve. We are one another's encouragers. And um, we got to do that on set. It's lovely too, Angela, to have a film that that really depicts a couple, a strong woman and, and a strong man pairing together to do, you know, in their case, the sort of greatest privilege two humans have ever had and be able to selflessly do that where, again, we're not depicted together, but we're there cheering each other on. Um, it was, again, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of highs and lows uh, in creative projects. But when you look at the fruit of it, um, we sit here very proud of the chance to be a part of re retelling this story, speaking of music, with a very musical flair. And the music's great, by the way. The music's what would, really What would be your favorite song? in there because like obviously musicals the music is very extravagant like we were saying before it's kind of over the top but it, that just makes it so much more fun right like to just be able to be sitting in the theater or sitting at home watching or in your car and just like putting it on you know I'm a huge fan of can we make this work which is yeah. the duet between Milo who plays Joseph and Fiona who plays Mary it's just like a brilliant pop duet and like, I think I it's so like pretty. I do think it's the song on the record like yeah. when you look at what people have responded to um mm -hmm. there's a lot of really you know it's funny when you're writing music it's the same thing in film you 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 have these songs that are like the singles or the, the lead songs and then there are songs that are sort of part of the support team you know so there's some other really beautiful songs um mother to a savior and king I've, I've cried uh over that it's and just, I think we would be remiss if we didn't celebrate the fact that these songs were written by another married couple yeah you know nikki yeah. and adam anders who also have a history of creative collaboration and our musicians and our musicians they wrote these songs and they're world-class songs like that pre-chorus like it's like it's, it's world-class world melodies yeah. and this is self-indulgent but i really love Anta Potter's song. Oh, yeah. Fun fact, I hadn't I hadn't even heard it until I got over to Spain because I was terrified to listen to it. I didn't want to listen to it without Mariah. Aww. So we sat in the hotel room together and like, darling, this could be we awful. Both, we both cried. We cried when we heard it. We were like, it's, thank God, it's good. <laughs> like, this is going to be me. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. And kind of switching gears a little bit, when you were making this movie, like we said, like this is about the Christmas story, but is there something that maybe just you both learned when you're making it about the story or about the process or something that is like a big takeaway for you in this? And what's fascinating is that um, Mary's depiction in scripture is very holy and very reverent. And I think that's a beautiful thing in the sense of in that time, women did not have a lot of rights. Um, Really, that was something I think Jesus was trying to overcome. So the fact that he lifted up his mom the way he did throughout his life is pretty profound. Mm -hmm. But she's not depicted as having a lot of personality, you know, any conflict or questions. Or, and, and even in Christmas films, I think, like the Nativity Story and so on, I, I, I don't feel like they really leaned in on what could she have been thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. How terrified was she? She could have been killed for, for this. This is blasphemy, you know. And um, I think this film does a really great job of bringing her to life. Yes, in a very modern way, sure. But nonetheless, scratching the surface of what was she actually going through? This was a 15, 16-year-old girl just grappling with one of the greatest responsibilities that a human had ever been, you know, asked to carry literally and figuratively and um and she did it really well and so i i thought she did a, the actress did a really good job of conveying that i thought mariah did a really good job of of mariah's character sort of the the persuasion of mary when a mary's like i don't know if i want to get married like i have all these dreams and mariah's the sort of maternal sister kind of guides her through uh to make the decision so it's a yeah thank you That's sweet fun story I think my takeaway is probably more from a production standpoint. Um, I I think having spent two months in another country with this crew of incredible 
DPs, lighting directors, script supervisors. Um, it, it was really profound to me to see the kind of people that were behind this production. They are hardworking, disciplined, mm -hmm. um, very focused, very passionate people. And I think, you know, being in the spaces in the creative worlds that we're in, it's it's rare to see families come together and, and work behind the scenes. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, the wife out front and everyone back home or the husband out front and everyone back home. And it was really beautiful to see that this was a script that had been developed over 12 years between a husband and a wife. And their two sons were reenacting the scenes and contributing to the description of the characters and, you know, giving out line ideas. And so, um, to see a family really bring something to life and to be on set together and to be really behind all of the post-production and to step into that together, you know, as a married couple, you know, I think for both of us from one family to another, it's really, really um, commendable. I think to see families creatively invest in something as a unit. For sure. And just one final question. What are you hoping that the viewers are going to take away from this movie? What do you want to be like the, the finishing thought to be like that sticks with them? I, I would hope similarly to what Joel was saying that for those particularly young women who are watching the film, um, who maybe like me had a hard time relating to the Mary of our cultural moment, uh, the like submissive, demure, uh, quiet version of Mary. I hope that women are able to find themselves in this version, this imaginative version of Mary, and maybe give themselves a little bit more grace for what makes them unique, what makes them different, what makes them ambitious or visionaries, and to know that those are beautiful things that can and should be celebrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, like I said, if you haven't seen journey to Bethlehem, highly recommend it, especially leading up to the Christmas season, bring the whole family. It's going to be a great time. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks Angela. Angela. We'll All see right. you again and bring your families. Yeah. Bring your and neighbors. Go this, go this weekend. Mm -hmm. so we need uh, we need this weekend for for it to carry on into the Christmas season. <laughs>